Welcome back to Switzer. A few months ago, he was a little bit nervous about Marcus, but after two months on the sidelines, he's back in and buying like there is no tomorrow. Well, that's my guess, that last bit. To explain all, we have Gary Stone, Managing Director of Share Wealth Systems. Hello, Gary. I'm very well, Peter. Thanks for having me on. Are you really buying like there is no tomorrow? Fully invested, Peter, just in uh, a day. Mostly, most of my orders were in on Monday. I should have got them all in on Monday, but a couple dragged into Tuesday. I've, I've got uh, three different portfolios I trade, and they're, they're all 100% invested. Okay. So tell us why you're so confident. Well, well, a uh, fantastic choice of words, confident. Um, you, know, you, know that the, uh, you know what confidence means? It means that you shouldn't think about what you don't want to happen. You should think about what you do want to happen. And uh, it doesn't mean that confidence uh, doesn't mean that you're going to you know, make lots of money. It means that you're just going to execute according to your process the way you should. Yes. But I am confident. I am confident because we got a we got an entry signal on our on our market timing on our medium term system on Friday, and uh, that that is on on the first chart if if the team can bring it up. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you'll see where that is relative to, to the last exit signal or the time that we, we got out of the market, we went into cash, was, was almost, uh, almost exactly two months ago to, to the day. Mm. And, uh, and now we, we committed. We committed to the market again. That doesn't, there's no guarantee that it's going to rock it up. But, but what we've got to do is, is put, our, put our money at risk. And, and it's a high probability time to be putting our money at risk in the market at the moment. OK, well, I hope my team eventually find the chart and put it up because you have referred to it but when they do get it up what's going to be the critical point that's actually going to show us this buy-in signal you talked about okay well, well we, we use we use a momentum market uh, timing system and it's a medium term one so you can see in fact the, the red ring just uh, yeah. about uh, in the middle of the chart over there was was soon after we we spoke uh, last time and that, that's where that's why uh, yeah, we went into cash because we don't know what's going to happen. Was that December? Um, so was that December? Or? It, it was mid mid December. That's correct. Okay. Yep. And we went into cash. Then we've been sitting on the sidelines while the market's effectively gone sideways, and we just we just slightly higher than what we were when we went into cash. Yeah. But the the worrying thing is that is that we are the S and P 500 is at uh, just a smidgen below its all-time high mm. and and we here in australia are, are right on where the where the um we have a, a, a strong resistance point which is that previous high that we had back in october yeah uh november so so that that, that is if there's some nervousness around from a technical perspective it's the resistance that we'll get at these levels. Okay, but you've, you've bought in. Do you think we're going to push through? On your chart, just above that green line, it's obviously it's hit that old high, has it, and, and bounced off it. Correct, and it's just slightly come down. And, you know, today we, had a, uh, we were expecting a negative day today, and we had a bit more positive than what I thought. You know, mm. we had some stocks in the portfolios that were up uh, 7, 5, 6, 7%. Um, even, even in a, in a lacklustre day today. So there, there's definitely momentum uh, in this market. It's, it's a bit broader than what it was uh, for the last, uh, gee, 21 months, which was, which was chasing yield. So we were going to large cap yield, and it was basically the top 50 stocks in the market that were, that were doing anything. And it was, it was very much a stock picking market outside of that. Yeah. Whereas now we're starting to see some breadth come into the Australian market and, and we lack breadth anyway compared to the American market. Yeah, our liquidity gets very thin beyond the ASX 200 when we just have this, uh, this focus on, on, yield, on yield plays. But we're starting to get some breadth coming into the market. We're getting mid-cap stocks. The mid-cap indexes, uh, indices are starting to do well, both the resource, all three resources, industrials, and, and the general mid-cap uh, 50 indexes is starting to show some outperformance of the all ordinaries at the moment. OK, let's go to chart two and tell us what we will see. Chart two, we talk about the, the commodities, the continuous commodities index now. Uh, that's it. Now, it uh, should be absolutely obvious to even the completely untrained eye what's happening at the bottom right-hand side of the chart there. Um, and I've... I've covered this chart twice in, in your super report, in the Switzer super report, yep. uh, once right down at the bottom over there where I said keep an eye on this because the, this is the leading indicator, the commodities indices, there's three of them, there's the continuous commodities index, there's the, uh, the, the old Goldman Sachs commodity index which is now run by Standard & Poor, 
And then there's the Dow Jones UBS Commodity Index. And all three of them have had similar rises to, to oh, or the other two have had similar rises to the, to the CCI. Yeah. And it's been led by a, a number of commodities, gold, uh, uh, crude, light sweet, which is obviously the American mm. oil price. Uh, there's been coffee, cocoa. Uh, the one that's missing has been a few others. Silver's obviously pushed it up a bit. Um, so commodities, there, there could be something happening here, commodities, but for our, and this is where I'm really pointing to now, for our market to really get a real uh, burst forward, we need our, our small cap stocks to, to start coming to the fore here. And they're not going to do that, I think, until we start seeing the copper price rising, and, it, and it's not reacting at the moment. But, but looking at that chart on the extreme right-hand side, You've got some kind of a circle that when you got in the market and the commodities have gone up since then, but you need much more commitment from commodity prices? No. The, on, on the actual commodity indices themselves, this is sufficient. And typically what we do is what will happen is, is on this rise alone, yeah, we rise. would see the small cap resource stocks. Now, our small cap stocks, 60% of them are resource and energy stocks yeah. in the Australian market. So really for our small caps to start running, we really need that sector of the market to, to come to the fore and sentiment to change there. Mm. Now, what's lacking from that uh, commodity index uh, rise is, is copper. Yeah. Uh, and, and to a lesser degree, zinc and lead and tin as well also sort, usually come to the fore when copper starts going. But we, you know, we're hearing from a fundamental point of view that, uh, that stockpiles and copper are, are getting to lower levels, but certainly not low enough yet to push the price up and <coughs> certainly not sufficient demand to, to push the price so up as well. So bottom line, Gary, in a nutshell, what is this chart telling my viewers? What it's telling our, our viewers is to get ready because uh, typically when this happens, the follow-through, and it hasn't happened yet, but the follow-through is that you know, the smaller uh, resource stocks in the Australian market start running, and when okay. that happens, it's when we get a fed income bull market in Australia. Okay, let's go to chart three. Okay, chart three, we were talking, there were three stocks you wanted me to look at. Yep. Uh, two of them were mining services stocks. Yep. I know you're keeping an eye on that sector, Peter. <laughs> uh, the first one is, uh, is Logicams. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it's had a tremendous fall there, obviously, on some on news. Uh, there's no evidence here whatsoever to start taking positions in this stock. It would be a total guess and a bottom pick. Yeah. Uh, too high risk, so stay away from it until there's some technical evidence. Yeah, of, what uh, what of you like right. to see is, a, is an uptrend, and if the uptrend is convincing, then you get on. That's right? Well, well firstly, what I want to see is a basing. So if, if you look a little bit further back, along the, to the centre of the chart, you can see we had a basing pattern there that went for, yeah, gee, yeah. I'd say that's probably a, nearly a year. And then, and then we up. had the breakout. Yeah. And, and there was a trade that we did on the breakout there, just uh, roughly on the breakout to, to the top. And that's a medium term uh, trend that we will get on the back of and get out <coughs> it when, when it gets up there and starts going sideways again. Okay. So we'd like to see some basing and then a breakout. Uh, the V bottoms are not, are not great. They, okay. uh, they, can, they can fall away just as quickly. Quickly, QBE. QBE, too early. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was on the show back in October, we, we spoke about QBE. Yep. Um, you, you can see where the red circle over there was the last exit signal we got out of it. There was a short-term trade there where it looked like it was going to go. Mm. Um, it met resistance. Some bad news came out after that. Uh, th that chart just tells you that the, the news was out before okay. amongst the inner, the inner circle before the bad news actually came out. Yep. Um, but far too early on QBE uh, from a technical perspective. Okay, we, need, we, need to, we need more evidence there. Okay, let's go to Monodelphus. It's surprised on the high side, reported very well, but what are your charts telling you? Well, the, there's a smidgen of a breakout there, so early days, a change in trend. Uh, that, that downward channel uh, has, has been broken out of. Uh, our medium-term system hasn't given an entry signal yet, and the reason that it hasn't is that it's relative performance against the wider market is not yet good enough to to get onto it mm. but certainly from a short-term perspective um, short-term systems would probably have given an entry into this already but medium term to longer term sort of wee bit early those who who like it for whatever reason uh, there's probably a higher risk trade that you could get onto in the short term but it certainly made the first baby steps that it needs to to uh, to get this uh, back into portfolios. But yeah. still a wee bit early. Yeah, I think so too, mate. That's why I wanted you to check it out for me. Thanks for joining us on the program, Gary. Always great to get your insights. And Gary does it's write a... for the Switzer Super Report and, and writes some great stuff as well. See you, mate. It's a pleasure, Peter.
If you want to read my thoughts each morning at the close of Wall Street, check out my website, switzer.com.au. And if you have a self-managed super fund, have a look at the switzersuperreport.com.au website. I'm Peter Switzer. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow night.